This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I use stencils? To start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have the demo anime head here loaded in. And the question is asking about stencils. So at the very top here, there's a palette labeled stencil, and in here you can activate a stencil, and it will appear on your screen. So what are stencils and how can you use them? So think of stencils as screen space masking. So it's gonna allow you to take an alpha, turn it into a stencil, and then use that as a screen space mask for your model. So as an example of this, I'm just gonna to go to the alpha palette over here and open this up. And then I'm gonna click on this alpha off here and I'm just gonna quickly select an alpha. And I'm going to select the Alpha 62. So the one down here that looks kind of like rocks. Now after I have this Alpha selected, and now I'm gonna go to the Alpha palette again, I'm gonna go to the transfer area, and in here I'm gonna click this Make ST button, which is going to turn this Alpha into a stencil. So just simply clicking this, this will now take that Alpha and it's going to turn it into a stencil. Now you see here, the stencil has now been loaded onto the canvas and it has this red outline around it. If you hover over the stencil and press spacebar, you're going to get this coin gizmo here. And in here, you can move the stencil around, you can scale it, so you can change different aspects of it, and it's going to allow you to perform this screen space masking across your mesh. Now you have some additional parameters you can also use with the stencil. So if we come up to the stencil palette up here and open this up, you have things like an alpha repeat, and this will allow you to repeat the stencil multiple times across your model. And after you have this active, you come across the surface of your model, and just make sure you have the alpha disabled that you were using. And if you sculpt, and it's going to look at the stencil and apply it as a mask. So you can see as I use the stencil here, I'm be able to sculpt this kind of pattern on the mesh. And then since the stencil is screen-based, I can rotate them all around, maybe reposition it, and then apply that stencil to the other area of my model like so. So just think of the stencil as a screen-spaced mask that you can apply to your model. Now, another thing that's pretty cool with the stencil is there's also a wrap mode. So if I come to the stencil palette here and open this up again, down here at the bottom, there is a wrap mode option, and this is going to take the stencil and try to wrap it around the surface of your model. So if I turn on this, you'll see that the stencil has now kind of snapped to my mesh here. So you can see it's taken that stencil and it's kind of vacuum sealed it around the mesh. Now if I sculpt on my model here, I'm gonna be able to get this effect and you can see it's gonna take that stencil and wrap it around the surface. And then if I rotate my model and then hover over the stencil again and press spacebar to move it, you can see I can move it around the surface of the model and it's gonna perform that wrap function. So this is really handy for creating different patterns for say dinosaurs, lizards, anything that's kind of reptile in nature. And you can use this really quick to create a stencil and then apply it to the surface of your model and you can get some really nice results. Now to turn the stencil off, we just need to go back to the stencil palette up here and then just toggle this button and this will now turn off the stencil. And now you should have this as your mesh. Now another thing you can use, I'm just gonna to go to Lightbox here and I'm just going to load in the demo soldier is that there is a macro that's installed by default with ZBrush 2018 that will allow you to take a subtool and then generate a stencil based around that subtool. So if I come to the demo soldier here and I just select his shirt and just kind of zoom in on this, so it's pretty close. And let's say I want to take the shirt and on his body, and I want to generate a mask on his body that will describe where that shirt is going to go. So if I have the shirt selected, I now come to the macro palette up here. And in the macros area, there is a macro that is called create stencil from subtool. So instead of taking an alpha and converting it to a stencil, it's first going to find the subtool you have selected. It's going to create a mask from where that subtool is located and then convert that to a stencil. So if I click on this, I'm gonna get a new stencil loaded here and just get some instructions on how to turn the stencil off after you're done with it. And now you'll see I should have a stencil created that was based around the shirt here. And I can go back to the demo soldier, turn off the shirt, maybe divide him up a little bit. And now I can come across and sculpt on the model like so. And it's only going to allow me to sculpt in the areas where that mask was generated from that shirt subtool. So this is pretty handy if you need to create like shadows or painting elements based on other subtools on your scene. 
Now, once again, if I rotate the model, you can see the stencil is not going to go with the mesh. That's because the stencil is working with the canvas plane rather than being a mask generated on your model. So if I wanted to make a new stencil to the side here of that shirt, I would need to come back and select that shirt subtool, then go to that macro option again, create stencil from subtool. This will now create a new stencil based around that shirt subtool again, and then I go back to my demo soldier, and now I can do the same process one more time and just use that stencil to define that area of the shirt. So those are two methods in which you can use the stencil option up here in the stencil palette to create screen space masking for your model. So if you have other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.